Pepsi says goodbye. <laughs> Here's Pepsi with me right here. Okay, so this is my first live stream. I haven't gone live before, so hopefully this all works okay. Let me just check on my computer here to make sure that it's all working. Okay, perfect. Here we go. We're live. Okay, let's see here. Make sure everything's working okay. Okay, here we go. We are live. Perfect. Let's see, make sure it's look, working okay. You guys can let me know in the chat if you can hear me all right and if you can see me all right as well. I haven't done this before, so it's the first time for this kind of thing. Okay, we've got some people joining. I'm just going to wait a few minutes until everybody gets here. Hopefully the picture quality is clear as well. I'm live streaming on my phone. So you guys let me know. Let me know how this is going. Let me know how this is. Perfect. Okay, so you guys can hear me and see me. Beautiful. Hey from Canada. So I'm going to start and... Uh, more people may join us. And I've got some questions that you guys sent from the last YouTube video that I did, letting you know that I was gonna be doing this live stream. But if you have anything you wanna say in the chat, anything like that, just let me know, because it's got the little chat box here. I know I've heard that you can go on video as well. I don't know how to do that, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not entirely sure how that works, but we will, uh, we'll start with uh, some of the questions. Unless you guys have anything specific you want me to talk about before I get to questions. But I'm really excited to do this live stream with you guys. It's a, it's a neat, neat, neat tool here on YouTube. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> hey from Australia. Cool. Hey from Canada. What do I do for a living? So I love making YouTube videos most. Obviously, you guys know that. I'm passionate about the raw food lifestyle. And actually something, I'll wait until a little bit later to announce this, but I have a new exciting project that I'm launching as well to do with the raw food lifestyle. Um, but I also just do odd jobs. I love working for myself and I love the freedom that that provides. So I love making YouTube videos first and foremost. And then also I do some raw food coaching for my website, 40belowfruity.com. But I also do seasonal work as well. So I try to work at vineyards and farms and things like that or work up on the mountain when it's winter time. I just love that kind of seasonal work because you don't have to commit to anything long term. And um, I really enjoy those kinds of jobs. So that is what I do for a living. But Ultimately, my ideal situation is to do this for you guys because I just love it so much. Okay, so I'm going to get to some of the questions that uh, you guys had. The first one from the video from the other day is by Pure Vegan Heart. And Pure Vegan Heart asks, how much are you currently spending on food per week? So this depends how much I spend on food per week. It really depends because sometimes I find things like, I found these mangoes yesterday. These are Peruvian mangoes. Yeah, they're from Peru. The brand is Encanto. I've never heard of them before, but um, we get various mangoes on Vancouver Island, especially at this time of year, they're out of season. This is not mango season at all. But for some reason we got these in and they're like $6 a pound. It's absolutely insane. Um, and usually I wouldn't spend this much money on fruit, but I actually was able to try these mangoes at the grocery store. If you ask your produce manager, uh, if you could try a fruit, especially if you're going to be spending a lot of money on it, usually they will let you try it beforehand. Uh, and I also know a lot of the produce people from my grocery store by name, just because I'm always in there buying fruit. So they let me try this mango, these Peruvian mangoes, and they were so good, so juicy and sweet. 
and I spent $7 a piece on these things or $6 maybe. Either way, they're really expensive. So when I buy fruit like this or Australian mangoes in the winter, obviously I spend a bit more, but usually I probably spend on average about $100 to $150 per week on food. Again, depending if I'm buying things like this. But I love mangoes. Have you guys ever tried these mangoes, these Peruvian mangoes? Do you, any of you have access to them right now? Let me know in the chat box. And then I, uh, I will get to the next question. Uh, any tips for eating, eating raw food in the cold? I think there's a bit of a lag period with this, uh, with this chat. So hopefully it works okay. Hopefully it's all right. It does look like it's lagging a little bit, but that's okay. That might just be the internet. Okay. So I'm vegan right now, but it is hard for me to eat only raw foods in cold Germany. So any tips? Yeah, definitely. Honestly, I know that some people don't like to make tea because it's not technically raw. And if you're really worried about that and you want to be 100% pure, then by all means, you do not have to drink tea. Um, you could also drink hot lemon water, something like that. But I really find in the winter, starting the day with something just to warm you up, especially right now I have a sweater on because I'm staying at a friend's place and they don't even have the heat on. So it is pretty cold in here. And the first thing I did when I woke up was to make myself a hot tea. And I like drinking green tea, but if you find that the caffeine doesn't work for your system, that's fine too. Um, you can have any kind of herbal tea, but it's just really nice first thing in the morning. And if you're having any digestive issues as well because of the cold, because cold weather and cold temperatures can make your digestion a little sluggish, having a hot drink in the morning is by far one of my best tips for being able to stay warm. And then also usually in the morning, I would have a smoothie. Actually, I've got my smoothie container here. <laughs> My, uh, my Vitamix here. I just finished my morning smoothie. It's, tw it's about after one o'clock here in Canada, but um, I just finished my smoothie because I've really gotten used to waiting a few hours in the morning before I have my morning meal, and I just feel a lot better doing it that way. <clears throat> so with my smoothie in the morning, I brought frozen bananas, but because my friend's place is so freaking cold right now, I was not gonna have a frozen smoothie. That's the last thing I was gonna be eating for breakfast. So I actually made a warm smoothie and I blended, <clears throat> I think it was three cups of water, 30 small dates, like little dates, Deglet Noor dates, with almond butter and orange oil. And I blended it in the Vitamix for maybe like two or three minutes. And by doing that, the smoothie was not cold. I, I would not recommend unless, well, I know, I know I'm not the only one who does this. Uh, where you like snuggle up with blankets. I actually have blankets on right now. So you snuggle up with blankets by your wood stove or by your gas heater or your electric heater and then sip your cold smoothie or eat your banana ice cream. I do that. I'm so guilty of that in the winter. Um, I still love those foods uh, even, uh, even in the winter. So <laughs> I know that that's not optimal if you are really cold, like living in Germany. <clears throat> and some spots in Germany can actually get a little bit colder than where I live in Canada here as well. I'm just going to grab my water bottle here. There we go. And for those of you who are just joining, I do have Pepsi with me. I know you guys asked to me to bring Pepsi. So let me just show you Pepsi right now. He's cuddling. <laughs> he is here. <laughs> He's tired. He doesn't want to, uh, he doesn't want to join on in the video. I tried to get him sitting up, but he just wasn't interested. Okay. So any other tips for eating raw food in a cold climate? Uh, try to heat up your food as much as possible. I know that you can make uh, warm soups in the Vitamix. I've never been much of a soup person. I don't know. I just don't really like soup. It's not my favorite thing. So I like having um, just salads and that kind of thing. But if you're not into that or you want something a little warmer, you can heat your soups up in the Vitamix if you have a Vitamix blender. Otherwise, you don't have to be all raw. Like it's not, there's not some unspoken rule that says you have to eat 100% raw. That's the only way to do it. And anything else is 100% less than optimal and you're not going to be part of the club. I'm, I don't really adhere to that anymore. I mean, I don't eat cooked food myself, but I still don't think that there's any reason you have to eat 100% raw if that's not what your body is asking for. You got to listen to your body. My body tells me that I, eat, uh, that I feel best when I eat raw foods. So that's why I do it. But if at any point I felt like that wasn't the case and my body was asking for any type of cooked food to share all the adventures with you guys but um oh Aussie mangoes a couple years ago for Christmas I wanted to uh, get myself a Christmas present so I actually bought a case of Australian mangoes and it was $110 <laughs> it's ridiculous they were like are you insane the people at the the checkout they thought I was totally crazy anyways it's worth it 
So if you live in a cool climate and you have access to Australian mangoes, they taste like honey and flowers. They're so, so good. But you're gonna pay a ridiculous amount. They're like $11 a piece or $12 a piece. So <laughs> just be prepared for that. I warned you ahead. I don't know if I'm gonna share that with you guys or not. It's a little bit secret, but um, I love Christmas here and I love the Christmas spirit in Canada. Eating that you want me to make a recipe video of or see what I eat in a day or anything like that, just let me know in the comments and I will definitely make videos like that. Okay, is it buffering for anyone else? Okay, let me know guys if, uh, if this is working properly. We don't always have the best internet up here in the wilderness in Canada, so <laughs> I'm not sure that it will be working 100% properly for all of you, but let me know. Just let me know ahead of time. Okay, it's buffering. Let me just see here, just one sec. Okay, just writing you guys a question here to make sure it's working properly. <clears throat> Let me just make sure it is. Okay, perfect, you can hear me, beautiful. Okay, great. So it's working for the vast majority of you. If it's buffering at all for any of you and you can't hear or see this video properly for any reason, I believe that YouTube will allow it to be visible for a minimum of four hours after I finish this live stream. So don't worry, you can get a chance to watch it afterwards. I believe you can. Maybe that's not available in every country, but as far as I know, you can. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the questions here. What do you think about the bentonite clay cleanse? Is it necessary to do a detox or a cleanse when you go vegan? I haven't done that when I went vegan two years ago. I'm interested in what you think. So because I had so many problems with my skin, I had cystic acne for so many years, bentonite clay was one of the first things I tried both internally and externally on my skin and then also having a little bit with my food. I didn't really notice any difference with ingesting it at all. I, I didn't feel like there was really any benefit. I actually feel like if you want to do some sort of cleanse, just eat fresh fruits and vegetables. Like it's not rocket science. Everyone wants you to believe that you have to do this complicated plan because complicated is always best and it always has to be hard, but it doesn't. Like it's actually very simple in my eyes anyways. I feel like the simplicity is better. And if you just have some fresh fruits and vegetables, maybe a little bit of nuts and seeds, listen to your body and give yourself time and have patience, then that's what's going to cleanse your body. But in, in regards to using bentonite clay on your skin, if you have any skin issues or acne, I found that it was very beneficial putting a bentonite clay mask, like mixing it with a little bit of apple cider vinegar and then spreading it across my face and letting it sit for like an hour. But the problem is that if you're still ingesting foods that cause the acne, it doesn't matter how many clay masks you do you use or how much bentonite clay you ingest, it's, it's not going to get rid of the root cause of your skin problem. So if you do have any skin issues, it always starts internally. It always starts with the food that you're eating. So I really recommend in terms of skin, just because I was able to heal my cystic acne after having it for almost 10 years, that you start with what's on the inside. What are you putting into your body? And maybe do some process of elimination, see what works for you, see what doesn't work for you, because what works for me might not work for you. And that's totally okay. We don't all have to be the same, but just, just do, do a test, do an experiment with your own body and you will find out. Okay, we've got some people coming from Canada. <laughs> hey, everybody from Canada. That's really neat. Okay, let's see here. All right. I'm gonna keep going down the questions. If, uh, if I haven't gotten to your question yet, I will. I'm gonna be on this live stream for an hour with you guys, so there's plenty of time. Okay. I grow a lot of root plants in the summer for my family as we are vegan, but I would like to eat more raw. Any ideas on what I can use my root plants for other than smoothies? Oh, 50 pounds of potatoes. Okay, that's a lot of potatoes. Depends on what kind of potatoes you have, but I mean, you don't have to do 100% raw, like I said. There's no like set in stone rule that you have to eat 100% raw. So if you have 50 pounds of potatoes, you're going to have to cook them. There's just no other way around it. I don't recommend eating um, raw starches unless maybe it's a little bit of squash or a sweet potato in a recipe. Um, so if you've got some squashes, I don't know, any kind of squash, butternut squash would probably be ideal or pumpkin um, or buttercup squash or you could probably use kaboka as well. Anything you can just cut the skin off because the skin would be pretty difficult to digest if it was in its raw state. 
Uh, but if you have any other kind of squash or potatoes other than white potatoes, any of those, you can use them. Let me think. You can make a pumpkin pie. You can make a butternut squash pie. These are raw recipes, by the way, like sweet desserts. Or you could do like a raw sweet potato casserole where you puree it and you blend it with some dates and some cinnamon and make like a pecan crumble topping. That would actually be really good. Never done that before, but you could definitely try. Or if you have a dehydrator, you could also take sweet potatoes and slice them very thinly using a slicer or a mandolin. And you could put them in the dehydrator and then make little sweet potato chips or something like that. So there are ways you can eat raw starches. They might not digest as well and they might not make you feel as good. I mean, they're not optimal, right, eating raw starches. I think that if you're not worried about the whole purity thing in regards to raw food, you're just better off eating cooked potatoes as they are. And the good thing is, is that cooked potatoes or, or just raw potatoes, if you pick them from your garden or buy them from the store, is that they'll last forever, months and months, if you have them in a cold, dry storage. So you don't have to eat them all at once, and you can kind of have them now and again if you want them a couple times a week. You're trying to eat more raw food. They'll store all winter long, so that shouldn't be a difference. <laughs> Am I sponsored by Vitamix? No, but I want to be. If you think I should be sponsored by Vitamix, you should tell them that they should sponsor me because <laughs> that would be great. Um, I really do love Vitamix, and I'm not sponsored by them at all as much as I would love to be. Um, I think they're a great company, and I've just used their products, uh, their, their blenders, for like the last eight or ten years. So I just really love Vitamix, but no, definitely not sponsored. I'm not really sponsored by anybody. So anything that I share with you guys, whether it's a food product or a, a kitchen tool or something like that, it will always be something that I believe in and something that I use my myself. I would never promote anything to you guys that I didn't uh, actually use myself and believe in because that is how I believe it should be. Okay, keep going down. Going down the questions here. Okay. Okay. I'm curious how cooked food affected your acne. Oh God, <laughs> while I was on the ship, okay. For those of you who don't know, I spent the summer in Mexico on the Sea Shepherd ship, the Farley Moet in the Sea of Cortez. It was an epic experience and I knew full well ahead of time that I was gonna have to eat cooked food and so I started to integrate cooked food into my diet in the spring. So I went to Bali, April, May, part of June and uh, doing my yoga teacher training there. And I started to eat cooked meals. And they tasted good, without a doubt. Like Cooked vegan food tastes good. Absolutely, when you add all the spices and salt and shit. It's great, it's so good. Um, that's why everybody loves it. But it definitely didn't make me feel good at all. Uh, it was a huge adjustment and I had so much resistance to it because I was like, I don't want to eat cooked food. There's a reason I'm a raw foodie, it's because I love the food I eat. If I didn't love raw food, then I wouldn't eat it. Like, what's the point, right? So I started integrating the cooked food into my diet then and then when I was on the ship, I ate a large amount of cooked food because you're tired from work all day and it really, ship life is difficult. It's not easy by any stretch. And um, when I was on the ship, my body, dealed, or my body dealt with the cooked food fairly well because I was taking a ton of enzymes every day. And I did a series of videos um, I will link to if you guys want to know those videos on how cooked food affected my body and what I did to deal with it and all that kind of thing. But, um, oh, got some more questions. <laughs> okay, cool. You guys have lots of awesome questions here and I promise I will get to them. So when I was on the ship, my skin actually didn't break out that much, which I was really enthusiastic about. I was like, this isn't so bad. It's not as bad as it was before I went raw altogether, which my skin was really bad then. But <clears throat> as soon as I got home and started eating raw food again, my skin went crazy. It was so bad. I had a lot of breakouts and I, you know, this is just my experience. So Please don't think that automatically you're going to have the same experience as me because you very well might not. But when I got back and started eating more raw food again, I found that my body cannot handle a lot of foods that it used to be able to again. So it's like it's resetting all over again, which is kind of frustrating sometimes. But when I went out to a raw food restaurant and tried to have some gourmet raw food with the salt and spices, my skin went crazy again. So what my body's telling me is that it wants simple whole foods raw fruits, raw veggies, and nuts and seeds. And as long as I eat those foods, my skin is doing great. And it's, to, it's a process, okay? It's, it's not like my skin was great a week after I got back from the ship. It was not like that. It's taken like two months almost. But it, your body balances out and you just need time and patience. Not that that's always easy. <laughs> I definitely don't have a lot of patience in regards to the skin thing. You definitely just have to have patience. So 
Okay. Some of you are from Sweden. Yeah, where are you guys all from? If you haven't posted where you're from, post it in the comment section because I'd love to know where you guys are all from. I think that's really cool. Okay. Oh, these are some really good questions. I like this. What would you choose as your last ever meal? Cooked or raw? Okay, so I have this theory. It's like this game that I play. If I knew I was going to die tomorrow, would I eat cooked food? Probably. I'd probably stuff my face full of vegan pizza if I knew it wasn't going to have like any effect. Yeah, and like cinnamon buns. Cinnamon buns. That would be up there for sure. I would have to be vegan. I don't want any animals to get hurt. Um, but if I had to choose like my last ever raw meal, I would probably keep it simple. Like a really good quality fruit like mangoes. Mm, or that's a tough one. I, I don't think I've ever thought about that before with like raw food. Mangoes or, or a really good durian or jackfruit or something. There's just too many. There's too many good ones. Hopefully I wouldn't have to choose just one meal as my last meal. Hopefully I could choose more than one because <laughs> that would be awesome. All right, let's keep going here. Okay. And actually, can you guys let me know? I'm very curious. <laughs> oh, reading through your comments here okay <laughs> um here we go you know what if you guys I, I I want some ideas now so if you have a favorite food that could be your last meal if you had to choose one food and this as long as it's vegan cooked vegan or raw vegan what would you choose that's what I want to know what would be your last ever meal if you could only choose doesn't have to be one item, doesn't have to be like just one fruit, but one type of meal anyways. Okay, I'll get to the next question. Okay, I think this is from Sweden. I have a friend who has just been eating potatoes for two months. Is that something you would recommend? Why? That's what I wanna know. Like why do these people do these extreme, I guess, I don't know, I guess raw food is pretty extreme. So it's like, I'm one to talk, but like just potatoes for two months? I don't know. I mean, if you're looking to eat simply, then go for it. I don't think you have to go that far. Uh, just eating one food only for a couple of months. It's just like the first thing that I think of is boring. Oh my God, that would be so boring. Why would you just want to eat potatoes for two months? I mean, maybe you would. If you really love potatoes, then go for it. But I don't think that that's what you have to do to be healthy. I think you can be healthy eating a wide variety of fruits and veggies, whether it's cooked or raw. You don't have to go to those extremes. So is it something I would recommend? Not necessarily, because I feel like the vast majority of people would not be able to just eat one food, especially potatoes for two months. Uh, yeah, it's not something I would recommend. Like if I was coaching somebody, I would recommend they eat a wide variety of foods and I would try to get them to try new recipes so that they felt the, the vegan lifestyle, cooked or raw, is not restrictive, but that it's abundant in different foods. So yeah, I would not recommend eating potatoes for two months unless they're your favorite food and you can't imagine eating anything else. <clears throat> okay. Wow, you guys got lots of questions coming down here. Let's see. Holland, Poland. Oh, this is so cool. Germany. Okay. Before I continue here, I'm going to send you guys a link for something just in case any of you can't stay for the entire time that I'm on here. I want to let you guys know that I am actually launching the Raw Lifestyle Academy today or relaunching it. Uh, you may have heard of it before. I know a lot of you have been expressing that you have been wanting to join it and asking whether I would be relaunching it. So here I will post the link for you guys. So the Raw Lifestyle Academy is going live again today and it's for a really affordable price too. Um, so I will post that link down below and if you guys want to check that out, you can. It's actually on a subscription YouTube channel now, which is pretty cool. It's the first time I've done this. And uh, what it means is that you get a two week trial to try it out for free. And if you like the videos and you like the content of the course, then you can continue joining. It's $29.99 and that's a yearly thing. And uh, if you don't like it, then you don't have to join. You can cancel it. So let me guys know, let me know if, uh, if you like that idea and hopefully I can answer some of your questions for those of you who've been wondering if I'm relaunching the Academy. Okay, let's continue down here. Ooh, what food could I not live without? That's a tough one. I'm not sure I could choose one food. Oh, looks like Pepsi's joining us for a short bit. <laughs> oh, he doesn't want to say hi to the camera. Sorry, guys. <laughs> what food could I not live without? Hmm. That's a tough one. You know, it would probably be something really standard like bananas because 
I eat bananas all the time. You know, if I had to choose two, no, let's just say three. I'll choose three because <laughs> I definitely could not live without these three. Bananas, dates, and avocados. Those are my three foods. I can't choose just one. Definitely not. Okay, didn't you say you were moving to Mexico and did you change your mind? Um, no, that was totally a clickbait title, by the way, obviously. <laughs> it's not like I'm just going to move to Mexico for the rest of my life. Uh, I did move to Mexico, though. I lived there for three months this summer on the Sea Shepherd ship. So I did move there and I loved it in Mexico, although it was a desert and the fruit was total garbage. No good fruit, no good mangoes. I went all summer without having a mango. You should, that was a very sad thing <laughs> for me anyways. So uh, yeah, I did move to Mexico. I'm not permanently moving to Mexico right now. I'm back living in Canada, uh, but it was just a temporary thing. So I did leave there, but I'm not staying there. Okay. Oh, okay. Someone was saying that we enjoy the beet chips. Yeah, so you can make <clears throat> you can make beet chips in the dehydrator or sweet potato chips or squash. Well, maybe not squash. I don't know. I would try that. Don't take my word for that. I'm actually not sure you can do squash chips. But um, you can definitely do sweet potato chips or beet chips in a dehydrator or in the oven. That goes back to a question that I, I was answering before as to what you can do if you have a lot of root veggies at home and you want to eat more raw food. You can definitely eat them raw. Just make sure you dehydrate them. Okay, let's keep going down here. Okay, this is from somebody who's in Canada. Hello, my fellow Canadians. I just moved back to Whistler and access to fresh fruits and veggies is limited. I've been buying cases of bananas and bags of apples. Are there any websites that you order fruits and vegetables from? Hmm. The biggest thing that comes to mind is ordering dates from the U.S. And you can do that through a website called 7hotdates or thedatepeople.net. So 7hotdates is a ranch called Batista, Batista Family Dates. And they, uh, they ship to Canada. The prices, the import charges have gone up. So sorry for those of you who are Canadian. You're going to have to pay like an extra $40 per case at the border. It still sometimes works out to being a little bit cheaper. And they're fresh. They're really good. They're like gooey, gooey, delicious dates. Um, that's the only thing I can think of in terms of ordering. Otherwise, there's an awesome website. I'll give you guys the link to. If you are Canadian, I'll post it down here in the chat uh, for Canadians. It's called Upea or Upea Naturals. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. Okay, so if you look up Upea Naturals or Upea Naturals, it is a Canadian uh, website or a Canadian company based out of Mississauga, Ontario. I've ordered from them a ton, and uh, the beautiful thing is that they ship anywhere in Canada within a day or two, and they have lots of things like, I don't know, blenders and food processors and spiralizers and stuff like that, or they also have raw food treats. They have like the best raw chocolate I've ever had. It's really good. Just be prepared though, because it, uh, it definitely gives you a kick. It definitely gives you a kick with the, uh, with the caffeine from it. There's something about raw chocolate. <laughs> Trust me. Okay, um, where was I at here? Let me just see. Uh, for ordering fruits and vegetables, I would also, I don't know, Jillian, I'm answering your question. I don't know what grocery stores you have access to. I'm trying to think of Whistler. I don't remember the grocery store there. It's pretty small though, hey? It's not super big. So um, I haven't spent a lot of time in Whistler. I've only been there a few times. So if it's a thrifty foods, I'm not sure that it is. Maybe they don't, you guys don't have that on mainland. Anyways, my point is that you can usually get dates in bulk, which is awesome. Anything you can buy in bulk is usually going to be pretty cheap or cheaper. And also if you have access to any fruits and vegetables from supermarkets that have like a discount rack that you can get them off of. If you can get them off a discount rack, if one of them is moldy, like an, a moldy apple in a bag or something, they'll sell them like 30 or 40, maybe even sometimes 50% cheaper. That's always a really good option to go with if you can. Okay. Let's move down the list. We've got a lot of questions here. Okay, how much money do I spend on food every month? I did kind of answer this in the beginning, but for those of you who may not have been here, it's about $500 a month. And I realize that to most people that is so unsustainable. Most people could not spend $500 a month. I get that, I really do. But in my experience, it comes down to priorities. So I don't go, I don't buy a bunch of alcohol. I don't go partying. I don't really go to restaurants to eat maybe once in a while. So the things that most people spend money on, like a ton of personal care products, and like I used to spend hundreds of dollars a month on clothes or like a whole bunch of shit I didn't need, personal care products, beauty care products, makeup, all this crap, and I don't spend that anymore. So I have no trouble spending $500, four or $500 a month on good quality food because that's what nourishes me. And to me, my health is the most important thing. I want to take care of my body. So 
I have no trouble spending that much per month. You may not have to spend that much. I know in the US there's a lot of places that, that sell cheaper food, but in Canada that is my reality, at least on the west coast of Canada. If you live in a bigger city where you have access to wholesale markets, then good for you, that's awesome. Definitely take advantage of those. If I did, I would, I definitely would, but I choose to live in this tiny little town where that's just not gonna happen. So that's how much I spend. Oh, cool. There's lots of people. Here. Holland, France, Poland. Yeah, if you're new joining us here, then let me know where you are from in the world. I want to know where you're from. See where you guys are viewing from. Australia, Germany, uh, and Denmark. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so here's another question from Germany. This is from Nyadia. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I mispronounce any of your names. When I eat raw, I get into a conflict between eating just as much as I feel like and eating enough to get all the nutrients that I should get. Any tips? Okay, so this is a tough one because definitely if you don't eat enough raw food, you risk not getting enough nutrition. But I also feel that people who eat raw foods are eating one of the healthiest lifestyles that you can possibly live, living one of the healthiest lifestyles. And we're often more concerned about getting enough nutrition than most people who eat total garbage and aren't thinking about it at all. Uh, I will send a link to you guys. I'll write it right here. Uh, just give me one second and I will type it up for you. This is a website if you are concerned and you don't know how to get enough nutrition. If you're getting enough nutrition, I will send this to you. So this is called Chronometer. So it's chronometer.com. The link is now in the chat box. Okay. So chronometer, what chronometer is, is a website where you can input your daily food intake. So you can put the foods that you've been eating and it'll tell you how much of each nutrient you've gotten and let you know if you're low on anything. And I don't recommend taking supplements if you're low on something. Usually you can, you can shore it up by eating more of a certain food that has that nutrient in it. But <clears throat> especially if you're beginning with eating raw foods, you might not be able to eat as much as is required to get the proper nutrition. That's totally okay. It's like when I first started out after a couple bananas, I was full. The idea of eating 10 in a row or something seemed entirely crazy to me. I would not sit down and mono meal, which means eating the same food until you're satisfied on like seven or eight mangoes like I do now. That just simply wouldn't happen. So it takes a, a good amount of time for your stomach to expand. Your stomach is a muscle just like every other in your body and it's got to it needs time to be able to expand, to hold the amount of food and the amount of fiber that is found in fruits and veggies. It's a lot different than eating cooked dense foods. I even noticed when I got off the Sea Shepherd ship this summer, I was used to eating these like super dense cooked foods, which my body did not like at all. Uh, and then I went to eating all this fiber rich, super water rich foods, these, these, these foods that were very bulky in volume. And I could not eat more than a thousand calories a day when I got off the ship. I really couldn't for the, for the first month even. And now I'm back to eating the regular amount of food I eat, which is like 2000 calories a day, which for me is a good amount. That's how much I feel satiated from. But that was not, that was not uh, <laughs> happening in the beginning. So just be patient with yourself. And if you have any concerns or you feel any ill effects from eating raw food, or you feel like you're dizzy or have mental fatigue, you can't focus or articulate sentences, uh, or speak properly, write, th those sorts of things, then you might want to look into eating more or try to introduce some cooked food into your diet and maybe don't do all raw at once, but transition slowly. Okay, let's, uh, let's keep going here. Um, <laughs> okay, got some more. Here we go. Just got to scroll up. Mm, all right. Is there any way I could help my friend become vegetarian? She would like it, but it seems to be very hard for her. My top advice is to be the example that you want. Okay, just think about it. What are you inspired by? Okay, so the reason I ask that is because a lot of times people try to preach to other people about going vegan or vegetarian. And I've noticed for me that just doesn't work at all. It's like the more you preach to somebody, the more they just close up and they have no interest in hearing what you have to say. But the perfect example is at the place I'm living in right now, I have said nothing about my diet unless I'm asked questions about it. So the other day, my landlord was asking me, I was making this ranch dressing for my salads. And if you guys want that recipe, I can post it. I did a video, a what I eat in a day video with that recipe, but I was making it with cashews. And she was so amazed that you could make a ranch dressing that didn't have any dairy in it. And then she started saying that she actually noticed she wasn't feeling very good and she really wanted to try vegetarianism and then maybe even go vegan. And we've only lived together for about a month and I never said anything about my diet, but she was always observing. 
So my advice, if you want to inspire someone to go vegetarian or vegan, is to constantly be around them, eating the foods you love, and just show them all the possibilities of what you can eat. Because maybe they think it's difficult because they don't realize how easy it can be. Because, I, I mean, I feel like for people who are not vegetarian or vegan, it's a pretty daunting idea. All of a sudden, they have to change all of their, their entire diet and eat all these foods they've never eaten before. What if they don't like them? What if they don't know how to make anything? So by giving them resources like documentaries or, I don't know, giving them YouTube videos to watch on showing them what people eat in a day and how easy it can be, anything that will inspire them is a good option. Um, but, but try to be compassionate. Try not to preach to them because just from my experience, it doesn't really work. So, <clears throat> okay, here we go. Oh, thank you guys. I really appreciate your kind words. This is Shandy. I just want to say hi from Ohio. I love you. You're such an inspiration. I named my rescue ferret Pepsi. Oh my God. That is so sweet. Um, I wish I could say that I named my dog Pepsi. He's over here on the couch right now. Here, I'll show you guys. <laughs> He's just sleeping what he does best. Um, I wish I could say that I named Pepsi. I didn't. It was actually a 14 year old girl uh, from my old landlords. So that's where I got Pepsi. <laughs> but um, I love Pepsi's name and I think that's so cute. A ferret named Pepsi. If you have a picture of your ferret, please share it with us because I love ferrets. I think that's so cool. So thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Honestly, all of you guys, everyone here who's watching today, I appreciate your support so much. And I, I love doing this live stream. It's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> uh, I got some questions from friends here that uh, I will skip past. <laughs> okay. I think there was a question up above that I missed. Let me just see here. Maybe I didn't get to it yet. Maybe I, okay, here, we'll keep going. Let me see here. Okay. Are you a part of a Sea Shepherd chapter on Vancouver Island? No, you know, there's not a huge Sea Shepherd presence on Vancouver Island. It's mostly in Vancouver and I rarely get over to the mainland because I live in this little like hippy dippy town that <laughs> we kind of all hermit here. So no, I don't, I don't really, um, anything I do with Sea Shepherd is usually done internationally outside of Canada. Um, unless we have a campaign to go to the east coast of Canada for the seal slaughter, I will definitely be joining that if we do have that. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> do you use a mandolin to make your chips? Uh, honestly, I'm lazy. As, food, as far as food goes, I'm about as lazy as it gets. I'm not going to do anything that doesn't require, that requires a lot of effort from me. I drink smoothies and I eat salads and I eat fruit and some dried fruit. I really cannot be bothered to put a ton of effort into something unless it's a dessert recipe because I love sweets. But um, if you were to make a chip, uh, like a beet chip or sweet potato chips, something you wanted to put in the dehydrator, I definitely recommend using a mandolin slicer at the same setting. You can do it, usually there's like three settings on it because then it will, they'll all be uniform in size and you want them to either cook at the same rate or dehydrate at the same rate. You don't want some that are super thick and some that are really thin. So yeah, definitely use a mandolin slicer. If you don't know what that is, you can usually find it at any kitchen shop. Um, they're like 20 bucks or something like that. Really easy. Okay, someone from the US. <laughs> we'll, swap, we'll swap Trump for Trudeau, please. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get into politics on here. Sorry, guys. You won't see any, uh, any, pol any political talk on my channel or on my live streams because I uh, don't even want to go there. <laughs> Definitely don't want to go there. Um, okay, here we go. Hi from Italy. Hello. Cool. Bit random, bit of a random question, but I'm just wondering, I'm finishing high school this week, and what did you do after school? Oh, you know, school and me, we don't really mix very well. I, uh, I have a bit of an issue with, with following rules and listening to, uh, <laughs> to authority. So, um, yeah, I don't, for me, when I finished school, I did try a couple of organized programs. I went to be an environmental technician and then it didn't work for me because my job prospects afterwards were not too exciting for me. And so I then switched to some outdoor uh, leadership training, uh, an outdoor venture naturalist program in Northern Ontario. And I became a raft guide and a kayak guide and a wilderness expert, not, well, not an expert, but, you know, like wilderness training, I'm definitely not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I do enjoy spending time in the wilderness um, <clears throat> and I have enough knowledge to be able to help other people or guide and that sort of thing. I really enjoy that. But as far as school goes, that's really, that's what I focused on. And I also did my raw vegan chef training, of which there is no nationally accredited certification or internationally, uh, none at all actually. But it's just to it just gain more knowledge and to be able to work in a raw food restaurant, which I did for a little while. But if you're looking, if you're finishing school or even you're finishing university and you're wondering what you should do with your life, 
my advice is to always do what you're most passionate about. Because if you don't have passion for something, if you don't have drive for something, and if you don't actually enjoy doing it, then it's not sustainable. And I think that, honestly, life is far too short and way too precious to waste your time doing things that you don't want to do. And I realize that that is a pretty privileged perspective to have. Obviously, I live in a country and have a life that I can pursue my own passions. But even if it's difficult, I really recommend that anybody pursue their own passions. Uh, do something that makes you feel good. Do something that lights you up where you wake up every day and you want to do it. And for me, that's what, that's what life is about. You know, that's, that's what makes life worth living. So that would be my advice to anybody finishing school. And I, you know what? I wish someone had told me that. <laughs> if I could go back and tell my younger self, like, stop listening to what other people want you to do and just do what you want to do. That's what I would tell myself. So, Okay. How old am I? And do you have meetups in Canada? I am 27. I just turned 27 this year. And do we have meetups in Canada? Actually, let me know if you guys are interested in something like this. I know you're not all from Canada and that's cool. But I was talking to my friend Ashley, also known as Miss Naturally Ashley on Instagram. And we were saying we would love to host a fruit luck in Canada or something like, have you guys heard of the Woodstock Fruit Festival? If you haven't heard of the Woodstock Fruit Festival, it happens in upstate New York <clears throat> at Camp Walden. It's an epic gathering. It's huge. There's like, I don't know, anywhere, anywhere between 500 and 1,000 people every year gathering to eat delicious food. And they've got swimming and talks and this big water park on the lake. It is so much fun and it's so beautiful. And we were talking about wouldn't it be amazing to have the same kind of event up in Canada or host some sort of retreat or something. We were literally just talking about this the other day. And that would be my dream. I would love to do that. So you never know. You might see with Ashley and I and Chris Kendall or maybe some other Canadians, uh, Ted Carr or something. Uh, we haven't discussed it with those people. But we were just thinking how cool would it be to have a Canadian fruit fest or some sort of raw food retreat that was like in nature uh, where we ate delicious food together and, I don't know, did yoga or, I don't know, went on hikes. It's, it's just an idea right now, but I think it would be really, really cool. So let me know if you guys are interested in anything like that. Otherwise, I don't really have very many meetups. My friends and I get together and we eat raw foods and talk about hippie stuff. <laughs> you, know how, you guys know how it goes. Uh, okay. I kept a raw vegan diet for 16 days. Not now. I felt amazing, though. Yeah, I mean... You don't have to eat 100% raw. That's, I mean, I know I promote 100% raw vegan diet because that's what I love living myself, but uh, it's not set in stone. You guys don't have to eat 100% raw. It's not like you eat all raw or you have to go to all cooked. There is middle ground. So just just always know that. There's, there's no rule saying you have to eat 100% just because people who inspire you happen to do that. I just want you guys to know that. Ah, somebody from Hamilton, Mississauga, so close to me. I don't know if you guys know, but I am actually from Hamilton, Ontario. So hello from beautiful British Columbia. I haven't been home to Hamilton in a little while, but actually you guys have some great fruit markets in Hamilton. If anybody's near Hamilton or Toronto, Ontario, you guys have some awesome access to good quality foods, like fruits and veggies with Chinatown and wholesale markets. I'm a little jealous, actually, of the food you guys have access to. Okay, we have somebody from Croatia, somebody from upstate New York, Montreal, Italy. This is so cool. <clears throat> I really love these questions. You guys are great at asking these questions. Okay, let's see here. All right, okay, go back up. Whoa, there's so many questions. We might be a little bit over an hour here, guys. Hopefully you're okay with that. What is your dream job? If you were a millionaire, what would you do with your life and how would it change? You guys ask the best questions. I feel like I need to make a specific video of like awesome questions you guys have asked me in this chat. <coughs> Let me just take a drink here and I'll answer that. My dream job. This is going to sound cheesy, but my actual dream job is making YouTube videos. Since I was a kid, I loved public speaking. Like speeches, I swear to God, I, I hated school for the most part. I really hated it. Like I resisted every part of school. Elementary school, high school, post-secondary school. I just, I, did, I wanted nothing more than to, to be out of school and to have nothing to do with school. Um, but that being said, when it came to, uh, I think it was in fourth grade, we started making speeches, public speeches. And it was like, school got so much better for me after that. <laughs> I was so passionate about it. I loved speaking. And my first time delivering a speech was when I was like, I don't know, I was like eight years old or something like that. Maybe, yeah, eight or nine. And we had to draw numbers. And I remember drawing the last number because I, I won the opportunity to speak in front of about a thousand people at that age. And uh, 
I traded with the girl who had first because I went, I want to go first. I was so happy. And I, I gave a speech about dreams. It wasn't like it was a passion of mine, but I knew then that I wanted to use my voice and that that was the most important thing to me. So if I had my dream job, I'd be making YouTube videos and I consider it a privilege. I, I feel so lucky that I have my dream job. And yes, I would love if YouTube would support me fully and like I, I want to get out to more people. I, I'm so grateful, by the way, that I have 30,000 subscribers. That is just like, I can't even picture 30,000 people. That's so mind blowing, so incredible. Um, but I would love to get out to millions because I want to inspire as many people as possible with my voice. That's my dream job. And if I were a millionaire, what would I do with my life and how would it change? I would give back. Oh, I would, I would give back to people who have helped me, but then I would also give back to animal organizations. Sea Shepherd, you know, I would donate to be able to get more ships and to be able to do more work because I think a lot of people think that money is an evil thing, but I feel like it can do so much good in the world. And uh, yeah, if I were a millionaire, I would, oh, there's so many things I would do. It's, it's such a crazy, crazy concept. I would, I would use my money to be able to inspire more people, whether that's at festivals or through activism or volunteer or getting better YouTube equipment so that I can appeal to a wider audience or something. I would just want to inspire more people and do good in the world. That's, that's my goal with it all. Okay, let's keep going with these questions. So many good ones. Okay. <laughs> Someone else said, I'm same with the priorities, giving up, spending on nearly everything to get my raw food. It's so worth it. Amen. <laughs> That's all I have to say. I give up like, if, if it comes down to it and I have to choose, like I am buying food or I'm buying mangoes or something I don't need. Fruit always trumps it every time. Uh, yeah, definitely. Raw food, baby. All the way. <clears throat> Do you eat cooked foods and raw foods or only raw foods now? Only raw foods now. I'm not opposed to eating cooked foods and maybe the odd time I'd have like some baked sweet potato, but even then, it's not as satisfying as raw foods. Like I feel, for me, it's the, the idea of cooked foods is far more satisfying than actually eating them. I, I don't know, I feel like I build it up in my mind that cooked foods would taste better than they actually do. But I don't know, they just don't appeal to me. Honestly, I know I'm, I'm I, I guess I'm one of the few where that's actually the case, but yeah, I'd, uh, I'm, I'm definitely much more into raw foods for sure. Do I take iodine? Uh, no, I don't take iodine. <clears throat> and that's only because you don't want to supplement with something like iodine when you don't actually know what your levels are and you don't have advice from a healthcare professional. Uh, iodine is something where you don't want to overdose. You do not want to take too much. And so for me, it's too much of a risk to supplement with something like iodine or iodine, however you choose to say it. It's too much of a risk to supplement with something like that without the proper knowledge. And I do not have the proper knowledge in terms of my own body to know how much I would need or whether I have any kind of deficiency. You do actually need a specialized test to even find that out. Blood tests uh, don't actually tell you that. So, mm. so yeah, no, I don't, <clears throat> I don't generally supplement unless there's actually something wrong or I have a, a necessity for it. Okay, someone from London, Texas, right on. This is really cool, people from all over the world. Okay, how often do I eat garlic when I'm in a cold climate? <clears throat> I don't make any extra effort to eat any foods unless I'm feeling like eating them. So I put garlic, um, I've been having this ranch dressing every day in my salad. You guys know that when I find something I like, I eat it until I'm pretty much sick of it and can't even look at it anymore. Uh, so I eat garlic in my salad dressings just because it tastes good. Like I, I, I really do not subscribe to the idea of eating a food simply because it has certain health benefits. To me, it has to taste good. If it doesn't taste good, I don't care how many health benefits it, doesn't, it has, I'm not going to want to eat it. So I eat food because I enjoy eating a lot. <laughs> I really love food. Uh, so yeah, I, I, don't, I don't subscribe to like eating specific foods at different times of year of the year unless I really feel like it and my body's craving those foods, then, then I will. <laughs> Oh, questions, questions. Okay. I love Pepsi. I'm your dog, I mean. Um, I love Pepsi too. And I would say that he's really excited to be here, but he's not because he's sleeping in the corner of the couch right now. <laughs> but uh, uh, I love Pepsi too. He's like, I feel like he's a YouTube star. I met, actually, I was in a raw food restaurant like a, a couple of weeks ago. And this girl stopped me and she went, are you Tara from 40 Below Fruity? And I went, yeah, I'm Tara. And she goes, and she starts, she asked me how I am. And she's actually, I really want to know how your dog is doing. I haven't seen Pepsi in the last couple of videos. <laughs> and uh, I was like, don't worry, look out the window. My dog's actually in the car. He's fine. He's totally fine. I haven't given him away, but 
I was like, you know, I feel like sometimes people are definitely more interested in Pepsi, which I get it. He's really cute. I'm not as cute as Pepsi, and that's totally fine. He's adorable. <laughs> okay, we have some jokes here. Okay. Thank you for your answer. It was super helpful. You're one of my favorite raw vegan channels. Awesome. I'm glad that I can provide what you guys need. If you have any specific requests for videos or I don't get to your question in this live chat, I'm <clears throat> happy to make whatever videos you guys want. I make the videos for you. I mean, I make them for me because I love it, but ultimately I'm here to inspire you guys. So, <clears throat> Okay, I've heard that you're a really good cook. How do you do it when you don't taste it yourself? Actually, there's someone watching right now who knows how good of a cook I am and has tasted my food, uh, and he's actually seen that I don't taste it myself. So maybe you can ask him. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, maybe he can comment in the comments below and, uh, and tell you what my food is like when I cook it. We'll see. We'll see if he says anything. Um, okay. I, okay, so how do, I, how do I cook it when I don't taste it? I, I don't know. <laughs> I wish I had an answer for this. I don't actually know. I just like throw a bunch of shit together in a pot and hope that it works out. Uh, no, you know what? I do know, actually. There's a reason. And it's because I love reading food blogs. Uh, I love reading vegan food blogs. And I love the idea of experimenting with different flavors and everything like that. And I feel like I have a good idea because my ex, when I would cook for him, and I cook for my dog all the time, when I would cook these foods, I would read through so many food blogs and different ideas to get, a, just to get an idea of how different flavors work together. And I don't know, I just have some sort of intuition. It's weird because I had never cooked any food aside from like microwave and craft dinner when I was a kid until I was 18, until I went vegan. I'd never cooked anything. I, yeah, I lived in a very privileged household. I never had to do a chore or cook food. I realized that's not normal, but um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know how to cook. I had no idea. I could literally make, I, I used to chop up hot dogs and put them in craft dinner and that was my idea of a good meal. So things have changed a little bit since then, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> okay, in Brooklyn here, by the way, are you going to the Woodstock Fruit Festival 2017? You know, the Woodstock Fruit Festival, I got involved with some drama around it a few years back, which I definitely regret. I don't like being involved with the drama, but I'm not sure that I would be welcomed back. And sometimes, you know, it's really weird. Sometimes I feel like I'm such a part of this raw food community online. And sometimes I don't, honestly, like I really want to be, but I, there's a lot of people that I don't resonate with. And I, I get it. Like, this is, this is the idea for me is that I used to base my friendships in the raw food community. You know, as long as someone ate the same as me, I assumed that we would have a lot in common and have similar values and ethics and live the same. And it's just not the, it's not the case for me. That's not to say there aren't a lot of beautiful, amazing people at the raw food festivals, like the Woodstock Fruit Festival. There are for sure. And I, my friends know that I, I care for them and I love them, but I, unfortunately, I have a bit of a bad taste in my mouth from all that happening, and I'm, yeah, I'm not sure that I'm on really great terms with some of the people who are in charge of organizing it, so that's why I don't really participate in those events, and when it comes down to it also, if I have to choose uh, spending money on going on some sort of vacation or, or trip, I will always choose volunteering with Sea Shepherd, so it, for me, it has kind of been the choice of do I want to go to a fruit festival or do I want to volunteer, and volunteering always, always wins for me, because that has a... a, a a close place to my heart so I like to volunteer instead if I have the if I have the choice okay someone said I so want a dehydrator I remember in your equipment video you don't have one why did you stop using one because I'm lazy <laughs> honestly like you want a dehydrator until you have to clean your dehydrator I mean maybe you're not as lazy as I am so you would uh, you wouldn't have an issue with it but Cleaning the dehydrator is such a labor-intensive job. I would rather just go to the raw food restaurant and get a wrap and they can dehydrate it for me. Uh, I'd rather do that because <laughs> I just can't be bothered. I like easy. This is why I eat raw food. Then I don't have to cook. I don't have to worry about anything. Just being honest with you guys. Okay. Lots more here. Keep going down. <laughs> okay. Okay, hello from Portugal. Why? Okay, I believe what you mean is why do bananas cause constipation? Because that is a huge wives' tale that goes around that bananas cause constipation. And absolutely, without a doubt, unripe bananas will cause constipation. But I can honestly say, as a person who's eaten a ton of bananas, like how many bananas? Like five or six thousand pounds in the last how many ever many years I've been eating raw. Uh, yeah, they do not cause constipation as long as they have spots on them. So eat them ripe and then you never have to worry about that kind of thing. 
Okay. Okay. Someone says, I ate smoked salmon and freshly baked ciabatta bread today. Such a great taste. How do you overcome these cravings? Okay, so for me, I do not have cravings for animal products ever because at this point of my journey, I've been vegan for almost a decade now and animal products are not food. They're just simply not food. The whole like, if you were on a stranded, if you were stranded on a desert island and all you had to eat was a pig, no, I would starve. Honestly, like I, I cannot see an animal, uh, any kind of animal or animal product as actual food. For me, it just, it's not edible anymore. And the reason that I feel that way and the reason I don't have cravings for things like meat and dairy is because I, when I went vegan, it was 100% for ethical reasons. It was not for health. I mean, maybe a certain aspect of it was for health and that's why I started researching about it. But the reason was ethical. I mean, I read a book called Skinny Bitch and it just opened my eyes and it, yeah, it horrified me. That night that I read that book, I was up laughing and crying because it's a really witty book as well. But yeah, animals to me are not food. At, at all. I can't see them that way. So I don't have cravings for them. You know, my, my roommates the other day were cooking bacon downstairs and I smell bacon and I feel nothing. And I used to love bacon. So that says a lot. But if you want to stop cravings for animal products, watch a bunch of documentaries. So watch Cowspiracy, watch Forks Over Knives, watch Earthlings. That's probably the best one. I mean, if you can get through it, it's, it's a hard watch. I can't even say that I have watched the whole thing because I feel like I know what happens and I don't need to at this point. I don't, yeah, I don't need to see that to know that I'm not going to eat animals ever again. Uh, but yeah, just form some sort, of, some sort of relationship with those animals and see them as friends, see them as sentient beings who deserve life, uh, especially fish for me, actually. The first connection I ever made to animals not being food was with fish. And I was about five years old up at my cottage in Northern Ontario. My family has a second home there. And we went fishing. I mean, obviously I wasn't fishing, I was five, but I was with my dad in the boat and he caught some fish and I thought it was really cool. You know, it was like our bonding time where we would go out in the lake together. And we came home and I saw him hit the fish over the head with a hammer. And I was devastated. I, I lost it. I freaked out and I started screaming and I was crying. And I just could not understand why the fish was being killed. And it never occurred to me that for the fish to get from the, the water to my plate, that it had to die in, in between. It never occurred to me. I was too young. I didn't make that connection. And after I saw that, I was like, I'm never eating fish again. And I never did. I, I, I don't actually think that was the first time I saw a fish being killed. And I don't think I've ever eaten it. And maybe that's why I feel so passionate about Sea Shepherd, because the first connection I ever had to an animal was from one from the sea. So if you're looking to avoid animal products, yeah, make a connection with them. See them for what they are. They're not food. And so as soon as, in my eyes, as soon as you make that connection, it's really hard to look at them. I, I never understood the idea of, of I was vegetarian or I'm an ex-vegan or something like that. Because for me, veganism is a life choice and it's not something that that you ever go back on if you have that connection. If you do it for health reasons and health reasons only, then I can see that it is easy to go back on that, that lifestyle change. But if you come at it from a compassionate standpoint of animals are not food, they're actually sentient beings, then it's entirely different. Um, when, it comes to, when it comes to bread, yeah, bread, I don't know. I mean, to me, bread makes you feel like garbage. So that's good enough reason for me. If you want to do an experiment, you want to see uh, how you can get these foods out of your diet, go raw for a few weeks and then try reintroducing those foods and, and see how you feel. If they make you feel fine, then maybe you don't need to cut them out. But if they make you feel like I feel like heavy and lethargic and digestive issues, if they make you feel like that, then no food is worth feeling like that. That's my idea anyways, my point of view. Okay, let's keep going down. Great idea, West Coast Fruit Fest. I know, right? I feel like it'd be awesome to have it on like somewhere in the interior of British Columbia. Or There's some pretty beautiful spots. We could have it like on a lake in a little cabin. If you guys want a Canadian Fruit Fest, let me know because this is, we're seriously considering this. We really are. Okay, lots more questions. Okay, let's see here. Do you like eating raw sprouts? I like alfalfa sprouts. And I like garlic sprouts. I really do. I actually used to work at a place that produced sprouts. I used to package them. Um, but yeah, long bean sprouts are kind of okay. Not really keen. I like sunflower sprouts a little bit. I don't eat them a lot. They're not a staple in my diet, but they are so easy to grow, so easy to sprout your own sprouts. So if you're interested in eating them, then go for it. I like garlic sprouts, particularly mixed with alfalfa though. That's a really good combo. Hello from East Vancouver. Hey, awesome, right on. Little Island in the North Sea, does Pepsi live with you permanently? 
yes, Pepsi, my ex and I, we, we talked about the, you know, taking care of Pepsi and everything. And Pepsi just doesn't fit into his lifestyle right now, which is totally okay. I thought about it a lot when I was in Mexico about whether I wanted to take Pepsi permanently. And I made the decision to do that. And honestly, like, oh, I love him. I love this little guy. It couldn't be any other way. People were saying to me, Pepsi could go to a good home. You could give them to someone else. Lots of people love Pepsi. But the reality is, is that I need Pepsi as much as I feel he needs me. And I love him. For me, adopting a dog wasn't just I'll adopt a dog until I get sick of him or until my life circumstances don't allow me to have a dog anymore and then I'll give him away. I never thought of it like that. For me, adopting a dog was a lifetime thing. Like I fully expected when adopting Pepsi that that was going to be a permanent, he's going to be a permanent fixture in my life. And he absolutely is. So no regrets there. Definitely. <clears throat> okay. Can you please describe veganism in three words? Ooh. Okay. One, compassion. Hands down, compassion. Ah, oh, three words. This is tough. I need time to think about this. Ah, okay. Let me think about this. Compassion, abundance. Yeah, abundance. Because veganism to me is about eating as much as you care for of nutritious foods that don't harm animals and don't harm your body and don't harm the planet. So compassion, abundance, and lifestyle. Because too many people believe that veganism is a diet. Not a diet. It's a lifestyle. It's a total change in not only your physical body, but your mental body, your, your mental abilities of thinking about animals in a different way. Your, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? I'm losing it. Anyways, you, you get what I'm saying, right? It's, it's choosing your mindset. That's what I meant to say. So compassion, abundance, and lifestyle. Those are my three veganism words. Okay, this has been awesome. Got to run, but hope you do more live streams. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. I don't, I don't really know what length to go to. So if you guys just keep asking me questions, I'm happy to stay here because I'm having a lot of fun with this. Um, yeah, I'll definitely do more live streams. I was thinking maybe once a week or something like that. We'll see. You'll see. Okay. Okay, it's saying, I'm having a, a thing here saying that uh, it might be buffering. So if you guys are having any issues, let me know, okay? Um, with, with viewing it because I, I may not have the best internet connection. I did try, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, some more questions here let me just let me see <laughs> one second I'm just going to type something here okay <clears throat> all right let's see here got more questions <laughs> okay here we go. What do you think of Dr. Michael Greger from nutritionfacts.org? Are there any books that doctors have inspired you on your journey? To be honest, I am not inspired by scientific facts. They can be proven scientific facts. They can be, you know, very true. They can be scientific facts that, that show that you can improve your health in various ways. I'm just not inspired by it. I, you know, for me, it's, I, I have to go with how I feel, whether it's scientifically proven or not. So, um, I think Dr. Michael Greger is awesome. I think he has a lot of very useful information and to people who like the scientific backing behind a lifestyle or a diet, then absolutely you should check him out. I think he's extremely well researched and very well spoken. So absolutely. He just appeals to a different audience and I'm not the type of person. So otherwise, yeah, he's, he's a great, great resource, a great option. Um, <laughs> oh. All right. Let's see here. Let me see. Okay, one second here. So many questions. Okay. Hello from Arkansas. Hello from Missouri. Ooh, some Americans here. Right on. Someone said, I cannot imagine you being involved in drama. Thank you for answering my questions. Yeah, I was involved with drama because there's a big part of the YouTube community and you'll, if you are interested in starting YouTube and you go to the Woodstock Fruit Festival, you will definitely meet some of them who say that you have to be involved with drama to get views. And it's true, a certain amount of drama gets you a lot more views. Um, it also gets you a lot more hate, which I'm not very good at dealing with, to be honest. I don't really like it. And it always left me with a really weird, kind of like sick feeling in my stomach. Um, I can't do it. I don't want to do the drama anymore. It's not even worth views to me. It's not really worth anything. I'd rather just, um, I'd rather be happy and live more peaceful. I really would. So, yeah, no drama. Not really interested. Um, <laughs> I can't figure out how to upload a pic of my ferret. That's fine. If you can't upload a picture, I'd still love to see a picture of your ferret. You can tag me on Instagram or Facebook or something like that, 40 Below Fruity. 
Uh, Lucas comes with a knock knock joke. Let us know what that is, Lucas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Since I'm secretly in love with you, what's the best way to ask you on a date? I'm sorry, but I'm already taken. That's uh, not something I'm exploring right now. Sorry about that. Okay, let's continue on. Does watermelon ever upset your stomach in the morning? I find it almost gives me heartburn-like feelings sometimes. So Melissa Canadian Fruity asked that. Watermelon usually isn't the issue. What you ate the night before is usually the issue. So if you're having any kind of indigestion from apples or watermelon or any other kind of water-rich fruit the morning after, if you, if you drink or eat it in the morning and it's causing you indigestion, look very closely at what you ate the night before and what time you ate the night before. So if you had your last meal at 10 o'clock, you know, if you went to bed at 11 and had your last meal at 10 or you ate very late at night, the, my point is that if you eat late at night, about an hour or two before you go to bed, then you aren't giving your body the proper amount of time to digest, especially if you're eating a food that's heavy, like nuts or seeds or starches or something. So if you are having issues with digesting water-rich fruits the next day, always look at what you ate the day before and if you ate complicated combinations. And if you didn't eat anything complicated, then I highly recommend having some water beforehand and doing a little bit of exercise before you have some water-rich fruits in the morning. If it keeps up, let me know because uh, it might be something else. But it's hard to give advice like that without knowing exactly what you're eating and what your sleep patterns are like, how your breathing is. There's so many different factors that impact digestion. It's not just the food that you eat at that specific meal. Okay. Can you give any raw dinner ideas for one who is new on this journey? Well, actually, let me know. This is by Yummy Fudge. Let me know if you have any meals that you like, like th that are your favorite traditional meals or uh, your favorite vegan meals or your favorite non-vegan meals that you'd like me to make replicas of, and I can make YouTube videos to do with that. And it's always good for me to get more creative. Some of mine, I love salads now. I'm really partial to salads, which is crazy because I was not the type of person to ever eat salads before. I hated them. Uh, but zucchini noodles are really great, or really great, sorry. So any kind of zucchini noodle dish where you can do a sauce over top, or uh, if you can dehydrate anything to make it a little more gourmet, um, or having a raw lasagna, that's really good too. I like that. Okay. Thank you very much for answering questions. Real inspiration to keep going. Oh, awesome. I'm really happy to hear that. If you guys have anything you want me to cover specifically in videos, let me know. I try to do a video every day. Doesn't always happen. I try though, <clears throat> but I love making them. I really do. Yeah, it will, this, this live stream will be available for about four hours after that, that I'm here. I'm going to actually try to download it on my computer or something. I'm not quite sure how that works, so we'll see. Next time, if it doesn't work, then I can always record it on my screen using my screen recording software. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here we go. If I'm not answering any of your questions, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's because they're not relevant <laughs> to the conversation for my friends who are listening in. <laughs> okay. What fruit or veggie do you eat every day? Bananas and lettuce. Absolutely. Bananas, dates, and lettuce and avocados. Yeah. Bananas, dates, lettuce, and avocados. <laughs> One second. I am writing a comment to you guys. I try to answer in the comments too. Okay, let's continue down here. Mm, all right. Thailand or Bali? I've never been to Bali. Or, I'm sorry, that's not true. I have been to Bali. What I meant to say was I haven't been to Thailand. So, I don't know. That's a hard one. Totally different places with a different lifestyle. And, yeah, it's, it's completely different. Bali is small. It's very, very beautiful. And it's very spiritual. Um, it's not as cheap as Thailand. It's definitely not. But I will let you know when I do go to Thailand. Is there any fruit or vegetable you don't like? Carrots. Ah, I do not like carrots. Ugh, I like them. Def I nothing else. And you know what? Mushrooms. Mushrooms and carrots. Just can't do them. Definitely can't. I haven't really met a fruit I didn't like. Apples, they're okay. I prefer them juiced. Don't really like eating them whole. But definitely, uh, definitely carrots and mushrooms. Definitely don't like them. Okay, let's see here. Let's see here, let's keep going. Do you supplement with B12? 
Um, I used to supplement with B12. I used to do injections. I cannot do injections. Oh my God, it hurts so much. I'm just such a wimp when it comes to pain. Like, do not like injections at all. So I used to do B12 injections, but it was because I thought I needed to. I have never showed that I'm low in, B low in B12 after 10 years of being a vegan almost. And yeah, so I, I don't supplement with B12. Okay, do you believe teenagers can safely be a raw vegan? Yeah, I absolutely do that, believe that teenagers can be a raw vegan, without a doubt. I think you can be a raw vegan at any age. There's just a different way of eating for each different age and different stage in your life. So if you are going to try to be a raw vegan when you're a teenager, you may need a little bit more fat. You may need to adjust your diet for how you're growing. You may need to adjust it for your activity level. I don't know a whole lot about that. Again, I'm, I'm not, a, I, I don't do a lot of science-based information. I do a lot of my own experience and trying to help people based on knowledge that I have, but I don't have any specialized knowledge in terms of like raising vegan children or raw vegan children or teenagers. Sorry about that. It's definitely not my specialty. Um, one person that's worth checking out, her name is Karen Ramsey. She has a lot of information about raising healthy raw vegan children and teenagers. I also know that Dan, Dan the Life Regenerator, I don't know that he's doing videos anymore, but I know he has a, uh, a daughter and she is now a teenager and I believe she's always been a raw vegan or maybe she's just one now. Those are good people to check out because they have more information on that than I do. Okay, more questions, lots of questions. Okay. Um, do you have any plans to travel in your future and where's your favorite place to travel? Yes, I'm going to Bali again in the spring because I'm going to continue with my yoga teacher training, which is really exciting. I love it. I'm actually going back to uh, assist at the same course that I did this past spring in Bali, which was my 200-hour yoga teacher training with Blissology Yoga. So yes, I am traveling to Bali. Um, not traveling this winter as far as I know because I have someone coming to visit me, which, uh, which will be for a few weeks in December, a couple weeks in December. So I'm, uh, I'm not going to be traveling, but it's just as good as traveling. Anyways, where is your favorite place to travel? Oh, that's hard. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to say I don't have a favorite place. I, I can't have a favorite place. Everywhere is so unique and different that I can't choose one place. I definitely can't choose one place. Um, yeah, I can't. They're all so amazing. And I have such good memories from each place that I've traveled that I can't choose just one because each each specific place I've traveled, I've traveled all over the world. You know, I've, I've been to Africa a few times, um, been to Europe, South America, Central America, Australia, um, the uh, South, Southeast, Southeast Asia. Where else? I think that's it. Canada, the U.S. And I couldn't pick a favorite. I definitely couldn't. They all have their uh, their positive aspects. I love that you're drama free. Me too. Life is so much better being drama free. Trust me on that one. Okay, I'm gonna have another sip of water here. Hmm. Ah, Coco Lee, I know you had asked this before, where do I buy my dates? You're in Courtney, right? Um, that's the same city that I live in on Vancouver Island. I buy my dates in bulk from Thrifties. So this isn't going to pertain to a lot of you, but for those of you who are local to where I live, if you go to Thrifty Foods, um, they are pitted Deglet Noor dates and they're really, they're really good actually. They're great for smoothies. Whether they're steamed or not, I honestly haven't found an unsteamed date on Vancouver Island that you can purchase at the grocery store. They're all steamed. That's just the way it goes. It's never impacted my digestion. So if you're wondering whether you can eat steamed dates, those are usually the ones that are already pitted, but the non-organic medjool dates that are sold in supermarkets as well uh what what date ranch i don't remember the date ranch i don't remember the brand they're all steamed so good luck finding raw dates unless you actually order from the date companies themselves okay you're awesome thank you uh, one more question how much sleep do you really need every day um that differs per person i like to sleep I like to get a minimum of eight hours of sleep. It doesn't always happen. I've been staying up later. I, I, I don't know. I'm just in this habit of staying up late and I like it. So yeah, go with what feels good. If you feel good on five hours sleep, and I mean actually feel good, not like you need a cup of coffee to wake you up in the morning. That's not feeling good. That's not what I mean. I mean, you feel when you wake up, you feel rested, you feel energetic, you feel like you can do anything with your day. That's what I mean by feeling good. So if you feel good like that after five hours, if you feel good like that after 10 hours, it's going to differ per person. Definitely, definitely it's a personal thing. Um, do you think a vegan should date a non-vegan? Where is the best place to meet new vegan friends? I think you should do what feels right to you. Um, 
the thing is, is that I ate meat at one point. A lot of people I know who are vegans ate meat at one point. So it's not far-fetched to think that someone who was a non-vegan could become a vegan through inspiration if you happen to inspire them. So I think you should always give people a chance. If you love someone, it doesn't have to be because they live the same lifestyle as you. You know, like I still love my family and my friends and a lot of them are not vegan and probably will never go vegan. I actually just did a video on this topic. Dating is a little bit more difficult. Um, I don't have to worry about that right now. That's not an issue for me. So um, where is the best place to meet new vegan friends? That's a tough one. Try to find a meetup in your area. Meetups.com usually has it. Or if you go on happycow.net, which is um, kind of like a restaurant or health shop finder for veganism or vegetarianism, you can usually find restaurants and that kind of thing. And they might also post meetups as well. Okay, guys, I'm going to look to wrap this up in a little bit. So I'm going to answer a couple more questions. I'm not sure how many more there are here. There doesn't seem to be a lot more, but I'm going to wrap it up. And if there's any more questions past a couple more, I'm going to answer. I will answer them in next week's. I might do this every Saturday if you guys want me to, because I think it'd be a lot of fun. So let's see. <laughs> how can you not like carrots? I know. I just don't like them. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Uh, what do you think about vasectomies? I think they're awesome. I think, now this is just my opinion. Don't get offended if you don't agree. I know this is a sensitive topic, but you guys know that I'm not having kids. I think we have way too many people on this planet. And I think anybody who doesn't feel like they want to have a kid shouldn't. Honestly, I feel like we're all on our own equal path and it doesn't matter if you want kids or you don't want kids. I think there's nothing wrong with either choice. I prefer to not contribute to overpopulation of the planet because that's what I feel is the biggest problem we're facing right now. So if you want to get a vasectomy, go for it. If it was as easy for a woman and if I didn't have to undergo surgery, I would, I would do the same procedure but get my tubes tied. But uh, yeah, I'm just not doing that right now. Uh, can you include in your daily vlogs a recipe for smoothies or salad dressings? I usually do try to include smoothie recipes and salad dressing recipes, but I will definitely consider that the more I do vegan vlogs or raw vegan vlogs. Okay. Hey, Tara. <laughs> hey, I've got some friends on here. It's really cool. Um, I go to the site to convert YouTube videos, clipconverter.cc. Yes, I use that too. I love it. It's a great website. Okay, let's see here. How can you not like carrots? I know, I know, I'm sorry guys. We can't all like the same foods. The beautiful thing is there's more carrots for all of you <laughs> because I'm not eating them. Okay, let's see here. Yes, you've got some comments about Thailand. There'll be Thailand, parts of Thailand that I will want to miss, I'm sure. I will definitely be heading to Thailand sometime in the near future. I will let you guys know. Obviously, I'll be doing vlogs while I'm there. Who knows, I never know my travel plans in life. They tend to just spring up on me and they're really unexpected and unplanned. Okay. Okay. So I think that's it. I'm just going to look at the, uh, the rest of the comments. Okay. There've been some really good comments here and some really good questions. Okay. Let's see. I think I got to most of them, but I will come back again next week, next Saturday, I believe, as long as you guys still want me to do these live chats. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. So there's some more questions, but if you guys have any more questions, you can post them on any of my social media platforms on Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, on any of the videos that I upload. If you have any questions about what you want me to talk about in these live chats beforehand, let me know. And I always keep a list of them so that I've, I've got them on hand, but otherwise this has been a lot of fun. This has been really cool. I really enjoy doing this live chat. And for those of you who weren't here before, I just wanted to remind you because a lot of people have been asking me about the Raw Lifestyle Academy and whether I'm relaunching it. And I'm actually relaunching it today. So it is on a paid subscription YouTube channel, which is awesome because I had a lot of technical issues before and none of that is the case anymore. So if I'm going to post the link again, if any of you are interested in checking out the Raw Lifestyle Academy or want to learn what it's about, I'm going to post the link down here for you guys. Okay, it's on my 40 Below Fruity website. And it's a beautiful thing because you can try it out for two weeks to see if you like it. And if you like it, then you can join. And if you don't like it, then you don't have to join. Um, anyways, I'm really excited to launch the Academy and uh, or launch it again rather for a much, much more affordable price, which is awesome. And I'm also going to be doing video updates for that as well. So I'm, I'm pl planning on doing maybe some live streams on the Raw Lifestyle Academy specific to the course and then adding update videos as well for the new content that you guys want me to add. Those are much more in-depth videos. They're not like quick vlogs like I do on my 40 Blow Fruity channel. So that's that. And uh, if you guys have any more questions, you can always go to my website, 40blowfruity.com. I have a little chat box that pops up and you can talk with me directly if you have any questions about the Academy. 
Otherwise, I'm going to be making videos as per usual on my YouTube channel. Like always, if you guys have any requests or recommendations, you can let me know and I will always try to answer your questions. I've got some new videos planned. I always have new videos planned. I love making videos. So I think that's it. I'm seeing some more questions from you guys. I will get to them next time, I promise. But this has gone on for an hour and a half, so I'm going to cut it now. But it's been great being on live stream with you guys. I really appreciate you guys all being here. It's been a lot of fun. It really has. So I think that's it. Thanks, Tara. That was cool. Yeah, it was cool for me too. It really was. Okay, good stuff. So I am going to cut this short. And I believe you should be able to view it for the next four hours. And I will also do my best to have it accessible so that I can upload to my YouTube channel. We'll see. We'll see if I can do that. If I can, then I will try my best. But uh, have an awesome Saturday, you guys. And I will see you guys next time. Okay, let's stop this.